as a young citizen of India, armed with technology, knowledge and love for my nation. With a vision of transforming India into a developed nation, I am joining Shobhith University. What about you? Very good morning to all the participants from India and abroad. Sobit Institute of Engineering and Technology, Meerut, and it's a Center of Excellence, Center for Agricultural Informatics and E-Governance Research Studies, and Center for Agribusiness and Disaster Management Studies. Extend greetings to all the participants from India and abroad who are attending today's national webinar series on doubling farmers' income by 2022, Atmanirbar Bharat in agriculture. This webinar is being hosted on every Thursday at 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Indian Standard Time. Today is 24th March 2022. This webinar is on the very important topic, <coughs> mushroom cultivation, a way towards self-reliance from agricultural waste and providing nutritional food security to the nation. Let me repeat. Mushroom cultivation, a way towards self-reliance from agricultural waste and providing nutritional food security to the nation. On behalf of the Honorable Chancellor, Honorable Vice Chancellor, the faculty members of the university and on my behalf, and as Professor Emeritus and the Chairman of the Centers of Excellence, Center for Agricultural Informatics and E-Governance Research Studies, Center for Agribusiness and Disaster Management Studies, Center for Informatics Development Solutions and Applications, Center for Industry 4.0 Technology Studies and Applications, and Center for Health Informatics and Computing. Let me welcome the today's guest speaker to deliver the talk in the 70th edition. edition of this national webinar series. I welcome Mr. Branjal Barua, founder Mushroom Development Foundation, Guwahati. For the benefits of the participants <coughs> and the guest speaker, so far under this webinar series, the university has organized 69 web webinars on the topic, namely, the role of agricultural cooperative societies and e-governance, blockchain technology-based fishery value chain, self-contained village, a felt need of the day, spices informatics network value chain, land and a camera, a camouflaged treasure trove, smart hill agriculture, a digitalized hill agriculture value system. Mara Mobile, Mara Marketing, Integrated Mariculture, Aquaponics, and Precision Agriculture, MAPA Biofarms for Income Revolution. Smart Tribal Agriculture, Optimizing Value Chain, Digital Agri-Tech and Industry Perspective. Land Resources Information System in India, India, Present and Road Ahead. Weather Decision Technologies for Increasing Farm Income. Big Data in Smart Farming. Sustainable soil and land management for climate smart agriculture. Understanding market dynamics for increasing farm income. Role of technologies in mitigating crop risk. How to generate additional profit via simple, attractive approaches in farm produce. Adoption of flexi rubber, jet, rubber check dam technology. Potential benefit for farmers in rainfed and coastal agro ecosystems. Realizing the economic benefits of agroforestry. After all, organic humic solutions for increasing crop yields and quality while increasing farm income and improving soil health. Closing the nutrient loop. Phosphorus management in protein farming, improving nutrient use efficiency on farm productivity. Artificial intelligence enabled pest management technology for agricultural crop protection without pesticides. Empowering farmers through extension and knowledge dissemination role of mass media. Smart poultry monitoring solutions. Agro-biodiversity, intellectual property laws, agriculture and farmers welfare and insight into the issues for India's agrarian economy. 
manufacture and application of biochar for increased soil fertility and crop productivity sustainable integration of livestock with agriculture for farm income increase role of geographical indications on improving farmers income lessons from asia pacific region dairy informatics network value chain a dairy tech startup perspective for farmers income increase spices informatics network value chain a turmeric startup perspective for income increase generating sustainable sustainable on farm income through fintech intervention nutrition sensitive agriculture pathway for increasing farmers income artificial intelligence and data analytics to ensure optimal nutrition in the soil harvested food that minimizes human disease bioenergy supply chain a business opportunity for rural enterprises and farmer produce organizations tech enabling india's tech star farmers for many fold increase in productivity and income open insurance ecosystem for agricultural producers risk management solutions to overcome repercussions for farm on farmers income market stability and food safety role of mass media for farmers income increase a case study from green tv at stack agricultural stack open source digital infrastructure for the agriculture ecosystem a linux foundation project circular bioeconomy towards resilience urgent need for redefining raw materials and modified waste management policies and regulations agri tech new horizon in indian agriculture supporting of farmers for marketing will only will help doubling of income by 2022 rural transformation for farmers income increase case studies from impoverished districts mobile enabled software as a service to solve complex supply chain challenges a case study from daily orders john deere's journey in india integrated precision agriculture solutions doubling the income of farmers through eco agri solutions revolution bayard's carbon farming initiative post production interventions maximizing value for farmers beef models of revival of traditional water management systems to enable doubling of farmers income should be adopted farmers welfare as a new paradigm instead of farmers income ict intervention in agriculture challenges and opportunities democratizing the future of farming a global experience commercial processing of fodder the next game changer in dairy data driven agriculture an agri tech startup perspective agri business potentials in moringa agriculture income pathways strengthening links between agricultural activities and nutrition outcomes technology education research and rehabilitation for the environment cultivating dignity for farmers modern village development program a case study from maharashtra market driven agriculture a need for development of crop specific strategies at block level farmers collective with value addition powerful business model for income increase for small and marginal farmers lessons from operation flood for transforming agriculture and food systems sustainable food production agriculture marketing in india defects therein and remedial measures if any small scale fisheries and their contribution to rural livelihood case studies from developing countries impacting lives through livelihood promotion and value chain development case study of virutti impact model organic spices cultivation for doubling of farmers income in northeast region of india a value chain analysis agriculture exports management imperatives of integrating with the global value chain at the earliest agriculture value chain challenges and opportunities dairy husbandry for food security and national prosperity today is the 70th edition of this national webinar series which will be addressed by mr pranjal barua year 2003 ashoka fellow founder mushroom development foundation gohati state of assam on the very important topic mushroom cultivation a way towards self reliance from agriculture waste and providing nutritional food security to the nation dear participants you see the key words mushroom cultivation pathway self reliance agriculture waste and nutritional food security 
Agriculture sector is the foundation of Indian economy. Acharya Vinoba Bhabha said, India is an agricultural country, Krishi Pradhan Desh, and a country of villages having more than 6.25 lakhs villages, Gram Pradhan Desh. And it employs more than 50% of the India's workforce and contributes almost 17 to 18% of its GDP. And farmers of India are facing multidimensional problems, price fluctuation, debt, and lack of infrastructure and weather. Indian farming community consists of about 14.5 crores operational holdings, of which 85% of the farmers have small and marginal size operational holdings. Farmer needs timely, location-specific, and personalized information for effective control on their production, risk, and then market their produce to identify market opportunities. To identify market opportunities. And Honorable Prime Minister of India, in his address on 15th August 2021, he said, I quote, in the coming years, we will have to increase the collective power of the small farmers of the country. We have to give them new facilities. They must become the country's pride. Chota Kisan, Bane Deshki Shan. He also said it on 28th, 28th February 2016. My dream is to see farmers double their income by 2022 when the country completes 75 years of its independence. I would like to quote the, some of the suggestions from the doubling farmers income by 2022 report. 2018. I was closely associated while formulating the recommendations of this doubling farmers income by 2022 report 2018. I was associated for volume 11 and volume 12b as a group, you know, leader. Volume 12, 11 talks about empowering the farmers through extension and knowledge dissemination. And volume 12b, digital technology in agriculture. It recommends the seven mission board programs for digitalizing the Indian agricultural systems. If this is done, 14.5 crores operational holders, operational holdings will get digitalized to the core. And the you know and uh, you know and the the seven mission board programs are digitalized agriculture, digital technology, and innovation in agriculture, synergizing of digital India. Make in India, Skill India, Startup India programs for transformational reforms in agriculture sector through smart irrigated farming, smart rainfed farming, and smart tribal farming. Digitalized agrometer advisories and agricultural risk management solutions. Digitalized agricultural resources information system and micro level planning for achieving smart village and smart farming. Digitalized value chain for about 400 agriculture commodities, 400 agriculture commodities, digitalized agriculture value system. Today, we will talk about mushroom, you know, value chain system. Digitalized access to inputs, technology, knowledge, skill, agricultural finance, credit, marketing, and agribusiness management to farmers. Digitalized integrated land and water management system and digitalized farm health management for reduction of farmers' loss. This is an integrated health aspect, farmers' health, plant health, animal health, soil health, water health, fish health, and environmental health. And, and it is very important. And the Government of India, through its committee on doubling farmers' income, have recommended boosting digital initiatives in the agriculture sector. And Atmanirbhar Bharat, it is the vision of Prime Minister of India, Sri Narendra Modi, of making India a self-reliant nation, rested on five eyes, intent, inclusion, investment, infrastructure, and innovation, and based on five pillars, economy, quantum jump, infrastructure, one that represents modern India, system, 21st century, technology-driven, vibrant demography, and demand whereby the strength of our demand and supply chain should be utilized to the full capacity. And the third drench of Atmanirbhar Bharat Abhiyan has seen that agriculture sector got 1.5 lakh crore as boost, and which includes 1 lakh crore to agriculture cooperative societies, farmer produce organization, 
and startups to for boosting farm gate infrastructure and 10000 crores for formalization of micro food enterprises and for following cluster based farming approach and is very important these two you know sub components of the agricultural uh, atmanirbhar bharat in agriculture are very important in for the mushroom cultivation and also would like to quote that the government of india during its the budget speech delivered on 1st february 2022 talks about amrit kal led up to 100 that is for the next 25 years from india at 75 to india at 100 a perspective strategic plan that where how you know where india will stand up when it at 2047 that is at the 100th year of, year of independence and i would like to quote from the speech of the honorable Prime, uh, finance minister madam nirmala sitaraman that para 5 of the budget speech by achieving certain goals during the amrit kal our government aims to attain the vision they are complementing the macro economic level growth focus with a micro economic level all inclusive welfare focus promoting digital economy fintech and technology enabled development energy transition and climate action promoting digital economy and fintech technology enabled development and energy transition and climate action relying on virtuous cycle starting from private investment with the public capital investment helping to crowd in private investment and also talks about in para 32 for delivery of digital and high tech services to farmer with involvement of public sector research and extension institutions along with the private agri tech players and stakeholders of agri value chain a scheme in ppp mode will be launched very shortly agriculture value chain challenges and opportunities in this webinar the university has posted very important webinar topics to strengthen the agricultural value chain to operationalize the recommendations of the doubling farmers income by 2022 mr tibakkar muharji talked on 10th to march 2022 very important topic agriculture value chain challenges and opportunities he talked about challenges of indian farming what is with the challenges in indian information service to the farmer and challenges in production services and challenges in market linkages and then on 3rd march 2022 dr parashram patil nehru fellow of uh, the fellow of uh, in the nehru nehru memorial museum and library minister of culture government of india he talked about agriculture export management he talked about that agriculture export management there he talked very specifically imperatives of integrating with the global value chain at the earliest india all agricultural commodities agriculture export uh, it has to be linked to with global value chain at the earliest it's very important recommendation and he also talks about in his conclusion india has got all the potential to become a global leader in food processing sector in order to utilize the full export potential of the processed food india may need sector specific strategies for export promotion worldwide and developed countries have fixed higher standards for import of food items it is advisable to encourage indian reputed brands for the export of processed foods globally as they can comply with the global standards of codex and it is very important that indian companies shall focus on cost competitiveness global food quality standards technology and tap the global processed food export market value chain development is very important it brings all the stakeholders engaged in the production system on a common platform to contribute their best while, ens- while ensuring fair deal and transparency value chain includes all the input suppliers technology delivery agencies 
scientists indirectly engaged in developing appropriate technologies and extension officers who are involved in the capacity building and providing various services to the farmers. Global value chain, it's very important. I would like to quote from report 2021 of Asian Development Bank. Global value chain are the cross-border networks that bring a product or a service from conception to market. And national webinar series on doubling farmers' income by 2022, we have, and it's and also it's in it in its international webinar series on open source digital technology toward central and India, we have organized about 10 webinars related to the agricultural value chain, spices informatics network value chain, smart tribal agriculture optimizing value chain, dairy informatics network value chain. Organic spices cultivation for doubling farmers income in northeastern region. Technology investment in agriculture value chain role of farm, you know, foreign direct investment. Rise of platform economy revisiting value chain governance. Leveraging emerging technology for ensuring transparent and traceable agri and food supply chains. Millet value chain from IoT to blockchain, a traceability roadmap. And digital agriculture supply chain and trading hub. A geoeconomic perspective by Mr. Maya Suresh Kandan is the executive chairman and CEO of AgroKarma, a transnational decentralized platform from AgroTrade Canada. In India, value addition of mushroom represents approximately 7%, which is lower than some developed countries, some developing countries. In India, value addition of mushroom represents approximately 7%, which is lower than some developing countries. Hence, there is a need to improve the value chain system and increase value addition. In mushroom, informatics network value chain is the need of the hour. Many novel value-added products can be prepared with mushrooms, like soup powder, pickles, chips, paste, ketchup, noodles, Pasta, biscuits, and nugget. This is from an article written by Afifa Khan and Bupendra Singh Kumar Singh in 2019. Mushroom value chain and role of value addition in the published in International Journal of Botany, Botany and Research. And another very important project which is go going on in the European Union that is called Mushnomics, Mushroom Economics, Mushnomics. Unlocking data-driven innovation. Unlocking data-driven innovation for improving productivity and data sharing in mushroom value chain. It's very important for today's topic. Mushroom, mushno, mushnomics, digital platform, a portal to the global community. And it will create a database of agro-industrial base, you know, base. That can be valorized, it can be valued to produce edible mushrooms, a highly nutritious food, providing an enormous enabler for innovation in the European food industries. Why can't we such a project in India, you know, for innovation by Indian food industries on mushroom? And the vision of mushnomics, I would like to inform the participants and also our honorable speaker is to start something irreversible, irreversible in relation to the wider use of ICT and digital technology. Solutions for the optimiz optimization of resource use efficiency, as well as for the reduction, recycling, and reuse of agro-industrial waste in the European food supply chain. And mushroom cultivation, today's topic, a way towards self-reliance from agriculture waste and providing nutritional food security to the nation. That's why in view of the importance of the today's topic, I thought that I should also inform the audience and prepare the audience to listen to this topic very effectively. That's why I quoted from, you know, reports from Asian Development Bank and also the ongoing development of project on mushroomics, a digital platform uh, in European Union and the need of the hour is that India should have a mushroom informatics network value chain, and which is what 
the Soviet Institute of Engineering and Technology, the, these two centers, Center for Agricultural Informatics and E-Govern and Research Studies, and Center for Agribusiness and Disaster Management Studies are involved also in association with the various NGOs. Mushroom is a gold mine, is a superfood, an attractive alternate to meat-based protein sources. Nature's gift have cancer-fighting properties, help in reducing blood sugar levels, and improve insulin resistance, in short. And mushroom cultivation in India is growing gradually as an alternative source of income for many people. Cultivation of mushroom has been in work for almost 200 years. Mushroom under controlled environment is of recent origin. It is pop its popularity is growing and it has become a business which is export oriented. Mushroom is an excellent source of protein, vitamin, minerals, folic acid, and a good source of iron for anemic patient. Mr. Branjal Barova, can you switch on your camera? Okay. Mushroom cultivation can be done at cottage and small scale industry levels besides large scale farming in a cropping cycle of 8 to 10 weeks an average yield of 10 kg mushroom per square meter is feasible mushroom cultivation yields best profits with minimal care and investment nowadays mushroom cultivation is the most productive and profitable business in india it is getting popular gradually in india because in short time it converts farmers' hard work into profit. Farmers use mushroom cultivation is a process in India as an alternate source of money. Worldwide, China, USA, Italy, and Netherlands are the leading producers of mushroom. In India, Uttar Pradesh is the top producer of mushrooms, followed by Tirupura and Kerala. And India only accounts for about 2% of the world mushroom production. And the land share is with China, which accounts for over 75% of global production. Why India is slowly blooming mushroom sector needs thoughtful policy intervention, according to Mr. Indra Shekhar Singh, Director of Policy and Outreach at the National Seeds Association of India. According to the article, since mushroom are neither plants nor animals and emerge not from seeds but from spawns or spores, they are outside the ampit of seed act and rules and also of the you know PPBFR that is protection of plant varieties and formats right act. India's slowly blooming mushroom sector needs thoughtful policy intervention and Indian policymakers need to create a separate committee for the creation of policies and laws in consultation with mycologists, farmers, and industry. This body, this body can produce training, you know, SOPs, standard operating procedures, purity standards, operating procedures, and redressal system for farmers and industry, much like the Seed Act. A separate sub-department is needed from the horticulture department. And states like Uttar Pradesh have already emerged as the top producer in India. But the consumption is still low, 30 gram per person when compared to US or Europe, where 2 kg to 3 kg per person. There is a huge opportunity, both domestic, domestically and for exports, yet to be you know, harnessed. By embracing and regulating mushrooms, the government may have a new ally to, new ally to combat multi, malnutrition and falling farmer's income. And there are different types of mushrooms grown around the world. There are about eight types of mushroom reported. Button mushroom, oyster mushroom, and paddy straw mushrooms are the three major types of types used for cultivation in India. All the mushrooms of commercial importance are grown by different methods and techniques. And current prospects of mushroom production and industrial growth in India, I would like to quote from a very important topic. 
mushrooms are long been valued as high medicinal and nutritional food by many societies around the world mushrooms are consumed as medicine in asian countries and many researchers work have been done on medicinal aspects mushrooms are used in ayurveda and folk folk medicines in india india is largely an agri agricultural country and producing a large quantity of agri agro waste every year approximately 620 million tons and fungi culture that is mushroom cultivation seems like an answer to farmers with no or less access to land resources with their low amount of carbon dioxide emissions mushroom are the minimum viable product in terms of sustainable agriculture because they require little growing resources energy water and land while emitting low emi uh, amounts of carbon dioxide and mushroom and alternative to agricultural land li livelihoods in northeast also that is gained popularity as an alternate farming option in northeast minister of rural development runs a special scheme on mushroom farming which motivates many farmers to adopt this alternative form of farming and mushrooms are slowly opening up as an alternative livelihood opportunity for struggling farmers their growing popularity as a superfood has led it to rising market interest in the product nutritious a good source of vitamin particularly niacin riboflavin and protein mushrooms are low fat and low carb carbohydrates this makes them attractive alternate to meat based protein sources of course there are challenges and the future and identifying edible mushroom spices outside the regulated are difficult some mushroom species are toxic, even lethally too. Separating edible from poisonous species requires meticulous attention to detail. And, and there are schemes from NABAR and ICAR directed a mushroom research Solan does a lot of research activities. And there are about 23 All India Coordinated Research Project and Centers on all India coordinated research project in mushroom and nine cooperating centers in 29, 23 coordinating and nine cooperating centers in 29, 27 states of the country with a mandate to make survey in the regions to collect new types of mushroom to undertake research and examine the adaptability of mushrooms and their different strain in different agroclimatic zones of the country and to test the developed technology of ICAR of directorate of mushroom research and there is also you know mushroom cultivation is a farming systems research center for hill and plateau region ranch and they also consider a way towards self-reliance mushroom development foundation of mr branjal barua is a not-profit citizen-based organization started in 1994 in finding livelihood based solution from agriculture based and providing nutritional food security to the nation their main mission and vision and objective health wealth employment and entrepreneurship and now they have reached eight states 32 districts 800 villages one like 20000 farmers according to the information available in their website Health means protecting the rights of the citizen to healthy and nutritious food. Wealth means protect, pro protecting the right of indigenous farmer to fair revenue share and sustainable livelihood with the social security. Employment and entrepreneurship means generating employment for youth and creating entrepreneurial opportunities for all through cultivation, processing and manufacturing at local level. Very important mission, vision and objectives and purpose. And uh, they undertake their approaches, selection through social economic survey, mushroom demonst demonstration unit, community participation, field demonstration, training, and farmer produce organization and marketing. And I also would like to tell something about our champion, our today's guest speaker, Mr. Branjal Barua. That is also once again from the published information available in internet. Back to 1994, Branchal Barua started his own mushroom cultivation to earn his livings. 
During the years, he got exposed to issues faced by small farmers and entrepreneurs. However, meeting a business growth of about 80% of year on year, pursuing the problems of sustainable growth in terms of economic conditions in the rural areas, he decided to create an organization which could resolve these problems collectively. In 2004, the Mushroom Development Foundation came then to light the agricultural for our small and marginal farmers, providing inconsistent, you know, financial returns as the market and quality production inputs are beyond their reach. And this foundation is producing mushrooms for nutrition and for generating additional alternate income with a view to further integrate their livelihood opportunities into holistic and eco-friendly market-based solutions. And now, let us turn to the address by Mr. Branjal Barua. He is in 2003, Ashoka Fellow, founder Mushroom Development Foundation, Gohati State of Assam, on a very important topic, mushroom cultivation, a way towards self-reliance from agricultural waste and providing nutritional food security to the nation. This topic will motivate and galvanize the participants watching over telecast through facebook.com Sobit University India, youtube.com oblique Sobit University in, or linkedin.com oblique company oblique Sobit University dash university for establishing mushroom startup and associated value chain at Gram Panchayat level to promote and sustain vocal for local to make it a global mission. Let us unlock the opportunities through Mushroom Informatics Network value chain in India at the earliest. Let me introduce the guest speaker to the audience. Mr. Manish, can you put the profile? Mr. Branjal Barua was born in 1969 at Gohati, an alumnus of Gohati Commerce College. After his metric examination in 1985, he started business in government order supply, electronic shop, timber trading. And finally, in 1994, after his graduation, started mushroom cultivation. His business in mushroom had grown from rupees 20,000 to 30 lakhs plus per, plus per annum in six years by 2004. He was among the first few people in the country to start a private mushroom spawn production laboratory. He has been conferred upon a lot of awards. Ashoka Fellowship as an exemplary social entrepreneur in 2003 by Ashoka Innovators for Public USA. Won the Clear Clarence Foundation, full 15,000 US dollars as the most powerful idea in poverty allevi alleviation in 2004. Since then, there was no stopping. He backed awards uh, after awards and milestones after milestones in his journey till today. Got the first prize in an international business plan competition at Will Grow, unconventional 99 at Chennai, and many more. He is the general secretary of Mushroom Development Function, which he co founded in 1996, and has established collaboration with host of esteemed institutes all over the world in pursuing the idea on making mushroom cultivation transforming into industry while empowering women farmers, attaining better negoti negotiating powers, environment-friendly, healthy, secur healthy security, and sustainability of the participants' livelihoods. With this collaboration, the implementation has been seeded across India and experiences shared in several other countries worldwide. Mushroom Development Foundation has been implementing several such clusters successfully in Assam, Meghalaya, and West Bengal, covering almost 1,000 farmers, mostly women, and have trained hundreds of thousands of people worldwide. And also started designing a comprehensive cluster development industrialization project for the government of Democratic Republic of Congo, Congo to provide livelihood to 1 lakh people in five years. Pranjal has started the livelihood ashram at Rani in Kamrup district, Assam, in India from 28th August to 2021 as a center of excellence for practical training and demonstration come production center, where the dynamics of livelihood solutions with medicinal plants, spices, horticultural crops, apiculture, art and craft, handloom and handicraft, 
and the experiences of cluster development with mushroom cultivation processing since 1994 is being displayed as a working model. With this introduction, let me welcome Mr. Branjal Baruwa to address the national webinar series on doubling farmers income by 2022, Atmanirbar Bharat in agriculture on a very important topic, mushroom cultivation, a way towards self reliance from agricultural waste and providing nutritional food security to the nation. Over to you, Mr. Branjal Baruwa. Thank you. Namaskar, sir. Good morning. Professor Monisha, you have been so elaborate <clears throat> on mushrooms. I'm so grateful and thankful. This is something which last 20 years I was like waiting for a very auspicious day. Uh, in fact, yeah, thank you uh, uh, from the bottom of my heart. And, and Soviet University, I'm really grateful for this uh, platform and giving me this time to express our uh, journey over the last 28 years. Yes, uh, mushroom is very important uh, and it is going to become more important in the coming days. So most of our, our um, uh, most about mushroom has been already um, addressed what i will be doing is only sharing my experience for the last couple of minutes for the next couple of minutes so basically as uh, professor moni has already uh, explained that we have started this cluster development process and that is the first slide that is there in front of you that sustainable scalable scalable sustainable livelihood with mushroom cultivation that is what we wanted to do for all all these years and and we have found out we have come up with a model to do this and a socioeconomics survey that is the first thing that we do when we uh, go for a mushroom uh, project to develop a mushroom cluster now we are developing mushroom cluster that is why i'm starting with this and on the way we sensitize a lot of people so that our aim is to have a horizontal mushroom market so that people get benefited from the hill benefited by consumption of mushrooms in tribal areas we have noticed that people consumes mushrooms but in non-tribal areas there's a lot of awareness needs to be done for increasing the consumption of mushrooms. So we do a lot of sensitization. Through this process, we select the most enterprising farmers who on, on basis of their need and on basis of their interest. And once we achieve the, these two parameters of finding the farmers, then we build up their capacity in several forms like you know how to grow mushrooms then how to how to manage post harvesting then how to develop a business plan how to develop value chain and 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 it goes on so uh, then what we do is we have come up with a very low cost infrastructure mushroom growing houses uh, with locally available materials and also the science of mushroom, uh, science of growing mushroom uh, intake. So, and 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 we also make sure that these farmers gets the input, the planting material like spawn, the plastic bags, then the packaging materials for uh, selling the mushrooms. Then we make this cluster you know uh, about 25 farmers comes together come together and form an area level federation and we had been also the first organization to uh, establish the first mushroom uh, cooperative in assam in 2019 so uh, uh, and and then we link them with the market and credit next slide please next slide please Uh, Manish, sir, so just click on the 
slide. Oh, yes, no. uh, okay, yes, yes, yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, yes. So, uh, basically, why we are doing it? We are doing it for two things. One is health and nutrition. Another is livelihood and wealth. How we are doing it to achieve this? Why? We are training and then we are developing clusters and in the clusters we are developing a value chain. And, and, and while developing this value chain, we make sure that, uh, that uh, it is as per the market need and the money that is required to be pumped in are also channelized. So, so these are the areas where we work to make sure that we reach our objective. And, and what we do to achieve all this, what we do is, number one, we, we do is quality mushroom spawn. We, we make quality mushroom spawn available in those clusters. Then we make this cluster people, we train up for them to develop value-added mushroom products. So our focus to start value-added mushroom products is with indigenous recipes so that it becomes very easy for the community to understand and accept the product. So to popularize mushroom, since our why, why we are doing is for nutrition, so people to consume mushroom first and then, you know, they start earning. So then to start earning, they start selling mushroom and to create jobs, what we do is to process the mushroom into pickles, into bakery, into a lot of other products. And, and also, we make sure that we don't use any chemicals. None of our farmers use any chemicals while production of mushroom. So this is what we do and how we do and, and why we do it. So we are absolutely clear <coughs> in our approach. And... I would like to mention here that next slide, please. Oh, oh, oh sorry, sorry. See, uh, as far as health and nutrition is concerned, so in 2020, we got the statistics that out of 107 countries in the World Hunger Index, we are in the 94th. And when we have seen Meghalaya as a state nearby in Assam, so it is the fifth malnourished state in the country. So health is a big issue. And when we talk about health, my personal realization, uh, when I had been to Europe for the first time in 2014, I had gone to Madrid and I was hosted by one of the Spanish people in, in one Spanish house. So there I was given a very big bowl, you know, somebody cooked food for me for the weekend. And I have seen they have cooked a huge, big bowl of meat and a very small bowl of rice. That realized that, that, that the food habit that we have is we have a lot of carbohydrates like rice and rotis and all. And we have very little compared with Europe on meat and vegetables so that was something which really caught me and then then i could realize that all these years that whatever study or whatever learning we had been doing whatever experience we have come across from that i would like to uh, 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 mention here that china in 1970s mid 70s they have realized that if they need to compete with the world as the world is becoming a global village so the the nation the every person should have minimum of 60 grams of protein that is a, a that is that is the requirement for you know having a healthy uh, body so if we are not healthy how can we build a nation so that is some realization and how can we have build a nation which is healthy and which is strong with minimum of cost because at that time China was not very rich. So they decided to use their agricultural waste. And China at that time, China today has about 100,000 
1,000 million metric tons of agricultural waste and India has about 700 million metric tons of agricultural waste. So, so we are second to China as far as agricultural waste are, is concerned. And then China decided in uh, uh, mid 70s that they will be converting their agricultural waste to protein. And the best way to do it is to produce mushroom. So in, in uh, 74, China was producing only 60,000 metric tons of mushrooms. And in 2012, they have crossed 1 million metric ton of mushrooms. Then I wanted to know that is China exporting a lot of mushrooms? No, they are exporting less than 5% of their produce. So what is, uh, what is China doing with 1 million metric ton of mushroom? They are eating it. And how did they develop the habit of eating mushrooms? Then I could see that if at any time anything happens, any epidemic, any kind of disease, the Chinese media keep on promoting mushroom. Mushroom khao, ye sart thik ho jayega. Mushroom khao, coronavirus thik ho jayega. Mushroom khao, ye thik ho jayega. So they keep on promoting mushroom for every health crisis in the country. So it, 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 you can say it's a propaganda, but yes, it's a very good propaganda. It's a very good uh, publication because Chinese have con started consuming mushroom and at that way, they have the cheapest means of protein infused into their nation and build up a very healthy nation. So India can do it very easily. So that is one reason why we have been struggling. You know, we have been here for last 20 years trying to spread this message uh, among our nation. Second thing what worries me a lot or worries us at Mushroom Development Foundation and since last few months uh, we, are, we, we are developing this livelihood project for Democratic Republic of Congo. At this point of time we were really trying to understand because Congo is the second poorest country in the world and uh, since these people who are funding us uh, they they are very keen in you know see that if they fund uh, Congo they want this country to you know rapidly go up. So we are trying to see how, uh, that how can we use youths, women, and men, you know, everybody in in the development of the GDP of that area. And then we have seen that India is far lacking in women's contribution to the GDP of our country. So it is below 20% uh, in, in 2019, it was 20. I think 2021, it has gone down a little bit. Uh, so, so we need to make this woman uh, participate in develop in, in producing. Uh, and mushroom can be one of the best option because the, they can produce in their home. It requires very little uh, space and oyster mushrooms, milky mushrooms. These mushrooms are very easy to grow even padistro mushrooms. And if we can make this omen grow mushrooms in their house, and if we can develop a system of, you know, value chain and cluster-based system, so we can also address our pro protein deficiency very cost-effectively and efficiently. So this is another area where Mush Mushroom Development Foundation has been trying to find the best possible cost-effective solutions. And while doing mushroom, we have realized that we are helping nature by production of mushroom and, and, and not in any way we are, you know, affecting the environment. So this becomes a very good vegan, vegan food because the trend of, you know, people taking up food is, you know, they're, they're trying to go towards helping the art to heal down quickly. So this is another area of our, you know, why we are putting more and more emphasis into mushrooms. Next slide. Yes. So when we talk about mushroom, we in fact think it as a food. So mushroom can industry can be as a food industry. It can be a food supplementation industry. It can be a food fortification industry. So it can be a medicinal industry. Already Professor Moni has talked about it. And when we talk about industrialization, now we have seen we can make 
ladders out of mushrooms we can make dye out of mushrooms we can make building materials out of mushrooms we can make packing materials out of mushrooms so the possibility of mycelium is enormous there are mycelium that eats plastic so 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 we can we can really have a huge business that was not there it can come up not only as a business but as a healer for the climate change uh, uh, of that we are facing today it can make it, uh, mushroom has lot of enzyme and 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 we require research on finding uh, solutions on extracting cost effectively enzymes out of mushroom that will have a very good effect we can make mushrooms into bio pesticide we have been talking about lot of poisonous mushrooms and this poisonous mushroom has the ability to make uh, to be made into bio pesticide so these are the possibilities to to have industries around so we can also have mushrooms as biofuel what i'm trying to put here is uh we are also a energy deficient country and we we need lot of bio energies to come in and my this after production of mushroom this mycelium the spain compost can be uh, used as you know uh, as as enhancer of bio biofuel development like if we use uh spain oyster mushroom compost in a gobor gas plant then we have seen that the 30% enhancement of gas takes place and also the gas production becomes faster so this is another area where we can really look into uh, mycelium and mushroom in in an bioenergy efficiency uh, area so there's another area which we can really look into and we have already started doing vermicompost out of mushroom spain compost so organic manure is another area so mushroom industry has one thing which i have because i was producing about 1.5 quintals of mushroom daily and i could see i was wasting 5 to 10 kg of this cut stem and we started experimenting with the cut stem and we came up with a very good cosmetic product and this was a, uh, a very good uh, mushroom um, uh, face pack and it works excellently well so these are the areas where we can think of industrialization of mushrooms as i have just mentioned that we are the second largest agriculture producer in the world and 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 we mushroom requires compared to any other protein you know if we see if we if we keep a cow if we if we think of milk and keep a cow we require about 15000 liters of water in a year and and if we if we produce mushroom we require only 10 liters of water so so you can see the difference of producing 1 kg of mushroom and 1 liter of milk or 1 kg of meat and that is why china uh, did what they started giving emphasis in production of mushrooms and today they are producing they are the largest producer in the world and they are the largest consumer of mushrooms also so that is one thing which we can do the every household can produce mushrooms and you know we can make it it, it, it very big every household means most of the what we see is in the warmer region we can think of milky mushrooms and paddy straw mushrooms in the colder regions like the sub himalayan region we can really think of growing any mushrooms Orunachal, we have not worked at all. Orunachal is a state where we can even think of producing morels, and we can think of producing. Um, um, we can uh, 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 lot of value, uh, 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 truffles. Uh, so, so there's endless possibility of this mushroom industry uh, uh, in our Indian context. So, if we see the quality of mushroom in North East, especially. you see that lady and uh, holding the big oyster mushroom so mushroom grows very well because of our humidity and and our climatic condition uh, and and we have uh, mushroom is one of the most uh, versatile recipe uh, produced it is much better than alu it's more much better than potato we can make anything out of mushroom you know 
just you just think of anything now we have started making candies out of mushrooms and it's coming out very good so so uh, and and since that 95 we started in 94 and since 95 we have been popularizing mushrooms that's a photograph from 95 we have been popularizing selling mushroom pokoras in the streets in the melas in the trade fairs so it's a long way and that's the track that we got on the corner that that is uh, from clarence foundation when i got this award on poverty on uh, on our idea on poverty elevation uh, uh, so these are uh, what mushroom has been teaching us over the years as we know i'll just not go into very big details in cultivation of mushroom but i'll quickly highlight it we require straw paddy straw or any agricultural waste what we do is cut it into small pieces soak it in water which is ph is of 6.5 to 7 and and then we boil it and we don't use any chemicals and we encourage farmers not to use it and then uh, and we also request everyone everybody to you know make sure that there's no chemical use on mushroom cultivation uh, because it has high residual effect then we make sure we get very good quality of spawn and and with this spawn we make the mushroom bags uh, with the with the boiled paddy straw only thing we have to see that the moisture content in the compost should be less than 60 percent so we will not elaborately discuss on the production of mushroom uh, because it is available here everywhere and it is very easy to grow if you see those ladies growing mushrooms they are growing in a small shed or just in a corner of a house with a plastic sheet covered and 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 also we have designed a very simple house with bamboo and uh, so we'll come to the design much uh, elaborately in the next slides now why mushrooms i would like to compare mushrooms with uh, vegetables so when we compare mushrooms with beet brinjal cabbage cauliflower celery green beans peas lima bean and potatoes so these are the uh, we we first compare calories so we don't require to eat much of cal calories as we mostly sit down so mushroom has the lowest calorie it has got very high moisture and and fat is very high, uh, low and this fat in mushroom is not colostrum so this is agostral so agostral is you know the fat that uh, the, the the oil that is there in a skin that's the oil that form in a skin that is agostral so mushroom help us to look good you know and and to make our hair shiny to make ourselves shiny so that is why you will see a lot of tribal people are they have very shiny skin uh, they have very shiny uh, silky hairs so mushroom is one of their major uh, food they consume and when we see protein mushroom is the highest in among all the uh, uh, vegetables so that is how it makes an ideal food for a healthy person especially in today's modern world and when we compare mushrooms with other meat uh, and visit um, um, other meat and animal products milk and all so we see that in essential amino acid uh, that is in part of protein so 98 percent is mushroom 100 percent is pork chicken and beef and 99 percent is milk so here i would like to mention if we have milk or pork and chicken we get a lot of cholesterol but in mushrooms we do not get cholesterol and at the same time if we eat one kg of mushroom and sleep no problem but if we keep on eating one kg of meat and if we sleep we will definitely have problem with a lot of heart diseases and whatnot so mushroom is that good so it's a modern man's protein again when we talk about amino acid score then also mushroom has about 89 percent of amino acid score we keep on saying soybean 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 but you know soybean is nowhere near mushrooms when we talk about uh, uh, essential amino acid soybean is next to mushrooms when it is nutritional indices so uh, nutritional indices about protein vitamins minerals and all these things together in one food 
and in chicken it is 59 percent in beef it is 43 percent in pork it is 35 percent and immediately next to it is mushroom 28 percent so this is where mushroom stands in the food chart as far as nutrition is concerned so that is why it is very good for blood sugar it's very good for uh, hypertension it's very good for heart disease it's good for tumor it has got lipid and it, it what it does is it's eat away the at, at the tumor you know uh, uh, of a person so a uh, mushroom helps in anemia where food and agriculture organization says that if a person takes 30 grams of mushroom every day they, she will never have anemia india almost 70 percent of women in india has anemic problem and and a very big problem with today's modern person is we wear you know full shirts and we cover ourselves from the sun and and then we create this huge vitamin b deficiency and mushroom when we if we if we cannot get vitamin d from the sun where can we get vitamin d from food it is from only sea fish and mushrooms so there is no other source where we can get vitamin D. And vitamin D is becoming a huge issue among modern people. And consumption of mushroom can really address this enormous issue that is coming up. So uh, uh, for only with 100 grams of you know uh, standard mushrooms, you can do away with your vitamin D deficiency forever. So I'll take you through some photographs of mushrooms. And this is the first photograph of oyster mushrooms. And, and it grows within the temperature of 20 to 30 degrees centigrade. And some oyster mushrooms now has been developed, which grows up to 30 to 33 also. Only thing what we have seen, if it is very high temperature, although we grow the mushrooms, we cannot intake, keep the taste of the mushroom. So the taste is something uh, so so far science is not being able to take care we are being able to produce mushrooms even at very high temperature but those mushroom taste is not as good as the ambient temperature mushrooms and oyster mushroom is very colorful if you can see we get yellow we get pink we get grayish we get white we get pearl white so a lot of different kinds colors of mushrooms uh, in oyster mushrooms and and then we get this another mushroom this is celosibe indica it's called commonly milky mushrooms and it grows within that within the uh, temperature range of 30 to 40 degrees centigrade and 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 so in india in assam in northeast we grow this mushroom from may to july so another mushroom is this button mushroom which is uh, grown in northeast in meghalaya and can be easily grown in other colder regions in ornachal and all and and uh, uh, this mushroom grows in between 10 to 20 degrees centigrade this is shiitake mushroom uh, shiitake mushroom is been grown in himachal pradesh then is grown in uh, manipur and nagaland and it grows based in oak trees so that is the big issue we are yet to have oak plantation for shiitake mushroom like japan has done so this is this needs to be a policy decision between the agriculture department and the forest department so that oak wherever shiitake mushrooms can be grown so so there uh, there should be some kind of plantation policies and and also cutting down of trees or cutting down of branches inside instead of the trees all this policy needs to be put into place so this is another realization and shiitake mushrooms are mostly imported into this country and one kg of shiitake is costing not less than 1500 rupees if it is not of very good quality and if it is good quality it can go up to four to five thousand rupees a kg and northeast has a huge potentiality for uh, growing shiitake mushrooms only problem for commercial shiitake production is the availability 
or it is available but the legal aspect of using oak trees or oaks on us so these uh, issues need to be addressed for its commercialization or industrialization this is another mushroom which we have started working on this is the lion's mane mushroom and and it is one of the best food for you know the brain for alzheimer so this mushroom needs to be uh, also taken special emphasis on which is yet to happen in our country so so this needs to be standardized this production needs to be popularized and and so that uh, lion's mane mushroom is extremely tasty it, it tastes like lobster so yes so this is another area we need to work a lot for its acceptability among the farming community yes maitake is another mushroom which is very fleshy and in common name is hens of the woods it is like hen hen means it's like chicken you know so this is very meaty mushroom and 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 uh, we have started a project with guwahati university in collab uh, is supported by dst for you know bringing this into common farmers production uh, we just started it 5 months back and so 3 years project so my silam colonizations has been achieved and we are working on finding uh, easy solution for that so that farmers can easily produce this mushroom because today any maitake mushroom that is used in india is imported so there's a huge potentiality of saving our uh, uh, in, uh, yeah foreign exchange so we all know that mushroom kills people so what mushroom kills people these are the two species from anamita one kind of mushroom that kills people and we need to really popularize especially in, in northeast we have done a study and we have seen that almost every year 200 people dies cons consuming these two mushrooms and no awareness has been ever designed we have designed several awareness programs and we have approached the government but yet this is still there there are a lot of issues i have written this in one of my book and the doctors are also not trained how to how to how to address this issue when there is a case of mushroom poisoning so so this is a area where the medical uh, uh, department the health department needs to take care the public health department needs to give emphasis on and we from mushroom development foundation have um, have uh, made the archive where we can share all the all the you know information on dealing with poisonous mushrooms so this is another area of work which is yet to be done in the country now when we talk about developing an enterprise and our vision of establishing mushroom cultivation as a social enterprise we as a as indians we are very proud of amul the amul model and 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 we i personally was always thinking throughout this whole time that we will make another amul out of mushrooms but when i read this book by dr korean this book uh, i too have a dream that book in fact shattered my my what do you, uh, what i can say is my aspiration to make mushroom into an social enterprise like amul because dr korean has very specifically and very clear, clearly mentioned there there is this one amul and there is not going to be any more amuls so and there is no more amul and there is no more amul going to happen according to his book and i being a follower of trying to do trying to develop a amul i could really realize from what this uh, my experiences 
that we will not be able to achieve this amul in my lifetime uh, so 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 i was very disheartened in 2014 and in 2014, we were having our lab in one of the big building of the government of Assam Horticulture Department. And they had uh, broken down the building to build something else. So I did not have a lab. And I had an opportunity at the same time because I really believe in destiny. And I had an opportunity to go to Europe. And in Europe, I went to, uh, I went to a place called uh, Barcelona where uh, I, I, I will talk about it in my next slide. But as an Osoka fellow, what we think, what we were, we, the, the philosophy of Osoka for establishing a social enterprise comes like this, you know. First, what Bill Drayton has said, has told that for becoming a social entrepreneur, you have to be innovative. Innovation is key for any social entrepreneurship or any enterprise. And innovation is something which I realize is not a stagnant thing that you innovate today and for the rest of your life that innovation works. To keep on going, we have to keep on innovating as time comes. And that is, I think, the secret of our sustenance for 28 years. Because a lot of people started with us and, and, and they are not there. But for us to survive in this difficult time and to keep on continuing, continuously grow is, you know, one pillar of this is innovation. And, and if there is students here, I would advise you that innovation is key for your sustenance, your success, your whatever. So this photograph, what I'm trying to show here is suddenly in 2019, we were asked by one, uh, the man, mission director of Assam State Rural Livelihood Mission, that you have to go to Delhi and you have to put up a stall for Assam, for your cluster. So we had a cluster for Assam State Rural Livelihood Mission. At that time, when this meeting was there, we never had put up a huge stall and we have seen in this trade uh, Azivika Mela, the food court has a food state food fall of 80,000 in a day. So it's that big. And how can we handle that kind of a crowd? Because we are not professionals. So then we sat down with the village ladies and we asked them, what do you know to make? All of you, all 200 of you. Then they said, we can make pitas, we can make coconut laddus, we can make this and that. So, so we had a huge kitchen, you know, 200 kitchen as our factory. And in this factory, we told them the first product will be coconut laddus. Now, coconut laddus is a very common product. How can we make this coconut laddu innovative? So since we are Mushroom Development Foundation, what we did was uh, they made, we cut mushroom into small pieces, cooked in sugar syrup, and then we make this into like kismis, you know, this uh, like uh, dried uh, 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 grapes. And then the small, small pieces of mushroom, we put it into coconut laddus and we colored the laddus with beet juice, with spinach juice and with carrot juice. So it become a very colorful laddu platter with, with, with very high food value. So that is that was the uniqueness of the product. So that was a simple thing, but it was innovative. And moment we displayed in our stall in Delhi, it came out in the front page of Times of India that coconut laddus from Assam are likely to grab your eyeballs. Feelings of beet, spinach and jaggery are make them different. So people thronged our, you know, uh, 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 our eight foot stall and like we were selling laddus like we sold 8000 laddus in 10 days just imagine and we sold one laddu at 30 rupees so so 2.4 lakhs of worth of uh, laddus we sold coconut laddus is a very simple thing and this is what this is a very big social impact so so uh, every day our ladies were making laddus and we're putting it into cartoons and it was flying to Delhi and we're selling it. So from 
the Delhi market to the pockets of these women, these 200 ladies. So this is a huge social impact. And what we have realized, the kitchen of these ladies are, are, are what we need, we need to use to, you know, to make mushroom popularized to, with, in a very cost effective manner. We don't require huge capital investment. We don't require much of anything, but we still can, you know, uh, because money is very expensive in India. To do something in any other country, you get a 2 to 4% uh, interest. In uh, India, if an entrepreneur wants to do something, this is a huge issue. Our banks charge us like anything. So until and unless money becomes cheap, I as an entrepreneur for the last 28 years, I could realize that money, if, you, if we have costly money, we'll have costly products. So if money is made cheap, then we can rule the world. Otherwise, how? How can we compete with somebody who is getting money at 2%, we are getting money at 20%? How can our entrepreneurs do that? How can we compete with entrepreneurs who, who, who are not taxed and here we are taxed with 30, 40, 50%, you know, taxations after taxations. So these are two things which also needs to be addressed. Because when I was studying, I was trying to understand how can we have an impact of DRC. So trying to understand that, then I wanted to see if there was any country who has gradually rose up to the, you know, uh, uh, to the first uh, three position in the world's uh, economy. Then I could see Ireland being an agro-based industry uh, country has quickly uh, uh, rose up to the third uh, richest country in no time then i could i went and i tried to understand how did they de do such a thing then i saw that they relaxed taxation like anything they made education practical you know 75 percent you work with your hands and 25 percent you read from books so so these are the two major changes they did you know and the country within 15 years has come from nowhere to the third position in the country so why not our country so that that that, that is also a realization from whatever experience we could gain so so we should we should see how can we have the best social impact in designing a social under, enterprise then then we really have to look into the entrepreneurship we, we we wanted to see among these 200 people how enterprising are they and, and, and while looking, because Bill Wrighton is absolutely correct in his vision for development of social enterprise. So what he says is entrepreneurship. We have to see. They see in an Osaka fellow like us, he see, are we enterprising? And, and how do we see enterprise? So, so somebody without nothing, like, you know, if we see any entrepreneur, they build up not with their father's money, but they build up from just nothing. Most of the world rich people builds up their empire without, with, with, not without, uh, not with their capital, but from scratch, from nothing. So pursuit of opportunity beyond any resources control. Nobody should be able to control an entrepreneur. No policies, nothing. So growth of an entrepreneur can only be achieved with courage and with patience. So I said two things. We require, of course, dedication. All these things are there. Knowledge. But we have to be extremely courageous. We need to build leadership. So what we do in our cluster, we build, we we make, we try to make every every woman a leader. And here you can see these two ladies from these two hundred people. They came out. We told them then to see you are going with us. We are going to pay your, um, and we are going to pay your fare. You know, from Guwahati to Delhi. But if we make a loss, then you have to pay us back the fare. Whoever agrees to it will only will be able to come with us. And, and if we do profit, we'll share with you. And if we do loss, you'll have to share with us. So, so out of these 200, only two, these two ladies came. And that is how we got the best ladies. That is how we did a business of, you know, almost three point some lakhs. Otherwise, if we had got some weak, 10 weak ladies, we not have been able to do anything in Delhi. So entrepreneurship is another, another area where we need to see the capacity of these people. These ladies, they work for 10 to 12 hours a day and made sure that we, we, we reach out to, you know, we did a sale of 
we our maximum cost of one plate of flatter of this thing was 100 rupees and we had then done a sale up to 35000 in a day selling 20 rupees 40 rupees 50 rupees 100 rupees products so you just imagine how much work three of us has done so the next slide what is very important for a social enterprise to thrive is the ethical fiber it's not only ethics it is the ethical fiber fiber is a very long thing you know just one day of quality will not do you have to be very strict in your quality you have to consistently manage your quality and then this quality management should not be very costly so in our cluster what we have done there is a hierarchy and there's a there's a double layer quality check before the mushroom reach the we at mushroom development foundation if we are responsible for the quality and if we look into the quality then we have a lot of cost infused in it a lot of time wasted so we made sure our cluster have the own have the mechanism in the value chain to to look into the quality and and they understand so the leadership building with ethical fiber is also very important in developing a cluster this is another area where because we have failed you know we have failed from 2006 and we have been failing and clearing and failing and clearing and finally we came up with all this 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 model so as i was telling you that i was depressed in 2014 when i read i to have a dream and the government has taken my lab it was one of the largest lab i was producing that was my lab huh this is not mushroom development foundation my company was protein food and i was producing about 50000 packets of 250 grams spawn in a month so that building was been broken down when I, they, they, so so i had given my machine to some of my boys who were working with me for a long time and i had gone to europe because i was sent to alimentaria and, and i was also like you know since I read that book, the laboratory was broken and uh, I was not very sure whether we will be able to continue with our dreams of having a social enterprise in place. And then I went to Barcelona with a lot of products from Northeast. So now there I can see the world market and what are the interests of the world market and why it is that products are interesting. What will they do with this product? I stayed for some time. I have seen the sticky rice from Assam is one of the product which, which they are very much interested in. They like this hood jolokia, the you know king chilies. They like the white mustard. So they like morana, the one kind of ginger which is highly medicinal. So I could understand and what they will do with it, what kind of industry they will you know set up with all those things. So, and as an Osoka fellow, I was hosted by lot of lot of uh, people like you know where I could learn so much about developing social enterprise because Spain is a place where did not I, I think all of you are aware that Spain did not let Walmart enter so that is that and, and I stayed with the person who was brain behind you know Anthony uh, Antonio so he was one of the brain who you know made sure that Walmart did not enter Spain and he hosted me in his house I stayed with him for almost a month so so it was a very very enriching learning for me to establish social enterprise and and keep this you know people who only thinks for, for themselves at bay so so uh, this is as i was moving around in alimentaria i saw this wine bottle which is very unique in color and it looks very good I tasted a little bit and it is in SMEs, we call it keha. It is not bitter, it is not sour, it is in between something like that. And it had a complete different taste. So I wanted to understand what it is made out of. I could, and I was told that it is made out of grapes skin. Then I wanted to know that if this grape skin is after you make the wine, the waste or what? No, they said that we peel the skin of the grapes and then from this skin, we make this wine and from the 
uh, uh, grape we make wine valencian wine is sweeter than any other wine in the world so now valencian and you can see this is izadi one of the very expensive wine brand and and then i said okay if that is what is happening i want to go into valencia i want to understand how it is done and what is the model then what happened was you know this was another osoka fellow i i talked with the country here in madrid and she told me that this is another osoka fellow who had been the brain it is his brain child this valencian model and i stayed with him and i tried to understand the valencia model it's a very simple model what valencia did is every liter of wine that is sold out of valencia a certain percentage of money comes to raul's foundation and and all the people who are in the wine industry is a member of this foundation and this money that comes into raul's foundation they invest in two things one is research and development and where do they invest they invest in the valencian university so at valencia university have a fantastic facility of wine research wine production research and grapes production research and and rest of the money they use in social security of all these people the farmers the workers the transporters the everybody you know so everybody when they get sick they get the best health care in the world when they get retired they get a very good package so so everything as a social security for their educational chase for their housing policy everything is taken care of by this foundation so this is one of the best model i have seen and my 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 aspiration for a social enterprise got stronger and i came back i i really wanted to understand that <laughs> i came back that no i'll not leave mushroom and social enterprise dream i'll come back and i'll double my uh, double my uh, initiative double our initiative and i pitched in a lot of places in europe and they started giving me a little bit of money i came back with some amount of money because raising fund is one of the biggest issue and I, when i came back with some money i came back and i i had i put put up in i had put up put myself up put mushroom development foundation up in a place called nongpo nongpo is 50 kilometers from guwahati and in between guwahati and shillong in meghalaya so why i set up this office in nongpo are set up in nongpo because it is mini northeast we get pani kheti pani kheti is where you cultivate in the plains with water rice and then we get zoom and we get terrace cultivation we have villages where you need to walk for 3 hours there is no electricity no road nothing there is villages which is next to the town so we have all the ambience all the study required practical so as we settled down in uh, nongpo and we organized some uh, uh, for more than 40 45 villages headmen together we told them that we want to do a you know eco friendly integrated livelihood mission that is what we have named it and and we had told them what we want to do and how we want to do and we need their cooperation the headman cooperated gave us two youths from his village and then we train up those youths and 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 we started this model of socio economic survey we try to understand and then then we went to the district administration and we had a meeting with the dc dc called all the line departments and then she flagged off our program so the money was what we collected from europe and and the then the government machinery has helped us in uh, rajal can you so the previous slide previous slide you just quickly go to that mm. this one yeah yeah just go yeah okay good hmm carry on now so the dc flagged off the program and then we went to the village after village doing lot of sensitization announcement and, and and then we did lot of trainings and then after the trainings i when i stayed in lot of those khasi villages i could realize their real issues and and that uh, they think that farmer is something you do the last thing on earth you know when they have nothing to do they become farmer so they, we to raise raise their spirit uh, 
spirit i wrote a book which was published in khasi and there you know uh, so this was the first book in khasi uh, on farmers and uh, and and i titled it knowledge of life uh, and and it talks about nutrition talks about mushroom cultivation also it talks about farmers dignity so so this happened and then we helped them because at that time there was no pedestro so we helped them uh, handhold them to grow mushrooms then become a collection and come out to the market so this was a process of almost 2 years that formal that help us in formulation of of our cluster model and this is the model basically what we do is in because we had been trying as i told you from 2006 and there were lot and lot and lot of failures all throughout and we came to this model of only 25 farmers as a area level federation we call it and this in this cluster model we have a hierarchy and this is the value chain like we first set up a mushroom demonstration in it after our survey after it takes us about three months of intensive work to find out someone someone who's the most enterprising person in that area and with that most enterprising person we set up the first mushroom demonstration unit and with that mushroom demonstration unit we we have the proof of concept in field and with his help we identify another four enterprising people and we call it the community processing unit so with that help of the community processing unit and every hierarchy has different level of trainings and this community processing unit they hire they also find out four four people so like that we bring in 25 people together so in the morning when these 20 people harvest mushroom they give it to these four people and these four people come and give it to the mdu for so within and they, they live within a vicinity within less than one kilometer from each other. And it be, the collection of mushroom from harvesting to collection is only one, one and a half hour. So immediately that mushroom gets collected. And, and because mushroom marketing, collection and distribution, the biggest challenge is self-life. So we need very efficient system of quality control and collection. And this collection and distribution is taken care with this value chain that we have developed and and doing an extensive within our with our experiences you can see there is no button mushroom in our chart so because button mushroom is something which is done by huge investment of five ten crores by huge industrialists so we have left button mushroom from our uh, from our menu and we have been concentrating in specialty mushroom like oyster, shiitake, milky, lion's mane, maitake, lucidium, enocate, and porcelain. So these are the eight mushrooms that we think we feel safe to be promoted by small and marginal farmers. The rest can be industrialized mushrooms. So once we have done all this, now we were ready with our you know model and when we are ready with our model a opportunity came in 2018 and and this opportunity in 2017 we 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 had participated in a global tender and for the assam state rural livelihood mission who wanted livelihood from for mushroom farmers and we competed with Deloitte and Don Bosco International Institute and we got this tender. So we scored 100 out of 100 in a technical bid and we got this tender and we had worked because we had this model and we worked extensively for a year and, and we found out the people, we did socioeconomic survey and then a lot of training, you know lot of training on growing mushrooms on inventory management on logistic management on product development on business plan development on on innovative then we did lot of market building exercise as a as we believe in horizontal market we want locally we, we want local people to eat more and more mushrooms so we did lot of awareness and then we came up with this innovative solution of the mushroom growing house 
and and this mushroom growing house is made out of bamboo used flakes and green shade net and uh, insect proof nets to keep away the insects and we have seen that we can we can grow a mixer of oyster and milky throughout the year so so instead of mushroom becoming a seasonal activity it has transformed into a year round activity so this is how we have built the mushroom growing house and again the mushroom bag making unit mushroom boiling unit and soaking unit everything is very cost effective very uh, easily built and for every 25 farmers there's one straw cutting machine which is the common processing unit and all these things were developed then we created a sale outlet of about 140 <coughs> outlets, some 20 wholesalers and and also some export channels and and in value addition we 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 uh, had workshops and we taught the people to make a lot of products like momo to mushroom fried rice and everything mushroom samosa mushroom this that scripsy fried mushroom sweets yeah a lot of lot of products and how to participate in fairs and do business uh yeah this is kind of intended in the first fair itself we did 1.03 lakh sales in delhi we did 2.54 lakhs in and and this was our achievement like you know in this cluster development uh, in just 18 months uh, right from selection for setting up of their mushroom houses production of mushroom to selling we had an achievement of almost 25 lakhs and 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 then we found out uh, the gaps because before that we never ever managed 40000 mushroom bags at a time this was for the first time uh, we had to manage 40,000 bags. Almost these 200 ladies had made 40,000 mushroom, oyster mushroom bags. And from, from our perspective, we were monitoring these 40,000 bags. And there was a contamination of 30%. So this was the issue. We have pinpointed the issue why mushroom industry is not being invested from the market. So we have to really address this issue the biggest issue was mushroom bag contamination. The second biggest issue was mushroom consumption awareness. The third issue was, you know, mushroom quality spawn at time. The, the fourth issue is a cold chain. You know, if we can have a four degree chain, moment the mushroom is harvested, if we can put it in a four degree chamber and if it is transported in four degrees centigrade then we can send it to hong kong we can send it to any place but this chain is missing then we don't have any if if we are not being able to sell the fresh mushroom we have no processing unit which process mushroom in bulk then when we are promoting mushrooms with mushrooms how can we integrate these other livelihood activities that can also come out with mushrooms so if we have this, then we have the most cost effective cluster development uh, done. So these were the six realizations from our massive cluster development in 2018 and 19. But immediately, as you see in 2020, as we're doing this, Corona came and all our, uh, you know, uh, these six points that we had, you know, uh, address to find out mushroom quality, how can we have the quality of bag intake, how can we build down to 2%. We have done this, we have done the work, you know, bag making units. And then we had developed street smart mushroom cooking classes. Then we have institutional mushroom awareness programs designed. Then we have this last mushroom livelihood ashram put into place. A center of excellence where all these things can be, you know, uh, Thought to, and then we had also sustainable livelihood with mushroom. This cluster model replication, and then industrial cluster development has been done in within. Uh, we have worked on in last eight months, and now this model is ready for DRC, which can be very easily done in India. And and what we did was we did lot of cooking classes. So 
only due to this corona things got little slow but we developed some 15 products very efficient you know indigenous and western both because uh, we have to look into the market and people love sandwiches people love pastas people love uh Kipsy fried mushrooms soups so we made all our village ladies they are being taught how to make almost everything so now in our cluster they can make mushroom pasta they can make mushroom sandwiches they can make mushroom assamese car they can make assamese tenga they can make chops they can make anything out of mushroom and and a lot of gypsy fried starters soups so we did extensive training in all these things so mushroom becomes a very interesting food in the community and they can also start selling it uh, and and now bcpl is giving us two uh, mushroom selling units with all the facilities for these ladies and then we started, you know, replicating it in Bengal and uh, uh, and uh, Meghalaya, this model. And now this year we are targeting 22, 23. We are we, we are starting starting to work in Arunachal Pradesh. Uh, and among our innovation, one of the biggest innovation that happened was mushroom candies. And these candies came out so well. One of our entrepreneur whom we have trained in 2018 during the lockdown had worked very extensively and came up with such wonderful candies made out of mushrooms and it got this award from the national innovation from the country and now we have seen uh, the, our patent lawyers are working and they have seen that nowhere in the world there is commercial mushroom candy so maybe we we will also get the patent for mushroom candy uh, uh, so that is what is happening and, and it's a good thing for us in India. So this is a very good positive sign. So now we can encourage our children to have as much candy as possible. Let them have as much candy as possible because it is one of the most nutritious candy that will be there in the market which was never there. So so this is and then in our problem solving we, we designed this you know knowledge hubs and and, and uh, in, input entrepreneurs and output entrepreneurs facilitation and then area level federation. So on on the uh, so this is the model which to reach out to hundred thousand people. Then we started signing MOUs with universities. So we signed with Guwahati University. We are done with a lot of other universities. There's Nice Jorhat also. Guwahati University, after signing the MOU, we started a spawn lab and then now we have got this Maitake project from DST. Then, then now what we are doing in this uh, educational in, 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 in about 14 colleges we have started and, and we are targeting to reach out to 100 colleges within the next two years. So we have developed a model, this, this one day seminar with a mushroom demonstration unit and now we are developing a six month certificate course and a one year diploma course so for the new uh, vocational education policy and we are tying up with colleges and universities to you know make sure that people can have this diploma certificate course and diploma course on mushrooms so this is another area we have you know on the problem solving on awareness what we are doing it and uh, in this our vision to reach out to uh, no, it will not happen in 2025 because it will happen in only 2030. We are trying to reach to 100,000 people. And now we have about 21 partners in in this whole uh, initiative. And this is what is the DRC project that look like. In Democratic Republic of Congo, we, to make 150 people sustain growing mushrooms, we have one spawn lab. We have one entrepreneur who will be only cutting down straw, making bundles and selling it to bag making units. So there will be three bag making units. Each unit will be making bags for 50 farmers. And these farmers will only produce mushrooms. And, and from each farmer, either one cooperative or one entrepreneur will be buying all the mushrooms. And these will be the selling units. And the figures are there. The investment figures are there. The revenue figures are there. 
so 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 a lab will be costing about 20 lakhs and the revenue will be about 25 to 26 lakhs so this this are the areas and and the total investment is about 3.15 crores uh, for each industrial cluster and the you know income the revenue is about 7.2 crores and for this about 200 people will be employed or you know 200 people's livelihood will be established so this is a industrial model that we have developed as a, in, a industrial cluster of mushrooms and and we we'll definitely love to uh, see that this happens in our country uh, maybe yeah uh, i hope uh, we can take it forward to the policy makers and and to establish this model in a practical way i think we need to take up the pain that is why we started this livelihood ashram where we have set up the mushroom bag making unit we have got a machine bag making machine from china we got it uh, uh, reinvented in india and then we got this machine here and now we are about to start this uh, mechanical production of bag making so this will ensure that this we can suffice to 50 to 100 farmers from this unit uh, to provide them with bags and also what we have seen another issue working in north especially there are several villages where we are working is been affected by man animal conflict and this huge elephant problem so we are trying to see in our in our farm also in our livelihood ashram also there's a lot of elephants that comes in quite often so uh, this is another area how can we have uh, mr brajal, mr. brajal uh, yes sir we will also uh, invite our honorable chancellor he is also viewing your programs to come to the you know front stage uh, can i invite our honorable chancellor to come to the front stage oh honorable please sir chancellor. please sir please sure I, Mr. Brunjal, uh, oh, you, you know, you, thank you very much, Mr. Brunjal. You know, it's a very important, uh, you know, your journey, uh, Ashoka Fellow, and had a lot of, um, uh, you know, aspirations like Dr. Korean, and uh, would like to stop Walmart to enter into mushroom you know, you know, value chain in India. And I'm very much, you know, like what you said is that from bottom of the heart, you are thanking the Soviet Institute of Engineering Technology to have this program on from you on this National Web Art Series. We are also very happy to have you that with today. And a very important social entrepreneurship, a social entrepreneur, a lot of innovation, social impact, entrepreneurship, we wanted to make every woman a leader and ethical fiber. And you said that you failed, failed, failed to finally you become successful. And, uh, you know, and then your Barcelona visit made you completely changed, come out with a new thought process, coming to India and starting work, you know, developed a cluster model with a value chain, which is now getting operationalized in a Republic Congo, you know, in a foreign country. And it's a very important journey. And I'm very, uh, we are very thankful for you to join us today in the very important, you know, uh, webinar series. And is a very important workable model and it has to be operationalized. And you have brought out complete value chain. You know, only thing which is missing here is that a digital enablement. Exactly. And this is where our, you know, the university, the Soviet Institute of Engineering and Technology, which we promote very effectively, that is the digital enablement of such value chain. We are working on various value chain. That's why in my, you know, inaugural, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, remarks that mushroom informatics network value chain is a must. So with this, I would like to welcome our honorable chancellor to uh, to the uh, uh, to the uh, uh, national webinar series. And I would like to introduce the Honorable Chancellor to the audience and also to the guest speaker. Sri Kanwar Shekhar Vijendra is the co-founder 
and the chancellor of soviet institute of engineering and technology meerat an accredited deemed to be university and the soviet university ganga uttar pradesh he is a very prominent social entrepreneur based in new delhi and carries leadership role in many organization he has been nominated as the co-chairman of national council on education of asocham oldest apex chamber of commerce in india for the year 2021 and 2122 shri kanwar shekhar vijendra is a persistent out advocate of initiatives for education for all and secular values and crisis management through diplomatic and peaceful ways and globalized system of learning and harmonious coexistence he has been instrumental in the development of number of higher education institution in north india including two universities many research centers and ayurved medical college college of naturopathy and yogic sciences and a 100 bed ice hospital shri kanwar shekhar vijayendra is a very is instrumental in establishing these five centers of excellence center for agricultural informatics and e governance and research studies first in the world center for agri business and disaster management studies center for informatic development solutions and application center for industry 4.0 uh, studies and uh, applications and the center for health informatics and computing in the university to promote informatics and technology led development in rural india shri kanwar shekhar vijendra is very actively involved with a number of social organizations acknowledging his contribution in the area of education and other concerns he has been copiously honored and awarded he has traveled very widely in india and abroad to the countries like usa uk germany australia russia china south korea vietnam mongolia united arab emirates mauritius rwanda uganda and etc etc to participate in various professional and social and educational activities he is a very passionate gandhian vivid reader i would reader keen learner social speaker occasional poet and a dream we welcome our honorable chancellor to the national webinar series on doubling formats in kavi 2022 and to, uh, honorable chancellor today we had a very innovative very interesting and also a journey of mr pranjal barua for the last 24 years he has been walking along with his co dreamer to make mushroom as a livelihood opportunity and also as an as an is an item which can fortify many ailments and he has been successful after may, may facing a lot of failures and today we are thankful to him for you know participating in our program over to our honorable chancellor for his valedictory address and also to interact with mr pranjal barua for his close association with the university honorable chancellor thank you very much professor moni good afternoon everybody uh, it is indeed a pleasure for me in every time when i am a part of this uh, very important webinar series doubling farmers income by new initiatives by social entrepreneurship <clears throat> new technologies new policies new ways i am thankful to mr pranjal barua thank you very much it was indeed a pleasure listening to you because many times this is not the first it is more than 65 67 webinars had been already organized in this series but many times i found that people speak using brain more they read slides but i found you were speaking from heart more than anything else your passion was speaking not your profession and this is exactly where the change starts because when we say entrepreneurs entrepreneurs are crazy people and especially people those who fail every time but every failed way gives a way a direction to find new ways every failure gives a new way that no i have to do something uh back stage i was listening to your story of your colored laddus and how it put an impact your laddus put an impact on delhi society you know these small innovations these small things these can come up when we are very much rooted generally what happens the moment we get wings we forget that there are strong roots have to be there because we can fly high but without very strong deep roots we cannot survive we cannot grow we cannot put an impact 
on the society. So thank you for coming and sharing your journey and uh, encouraging many of the people, those who must be listening to you today. And I'm sure that many of the young boys and girls, they will learn that from the kitchen of their mothers, they can start their journey of being an entrepreneur. Every time there are stories, viral stories, that uh, some mother started a pickle business, some uh, grandmother started something, and it became viral, and she is doing wonders. But having it as a social experiment, involving thousands and thousands of women from the area from Northeast, this is what exactly is making your story completely different, impactful, and must be repeated many, many times at many platforms. Mushroom growing, growing house. When you were talking about your mushroom growing houses, generally what happens whenever entrepreneurs come, they talk about that I'm having a technology, I'm doing this. They talk about increasing the capacity building, they talk. Not only individual capacity building, they say how much production I can do from a unit. They forget that for an entrepreneur having few crore rupees in the start, if you say, okay, you can become an entrepreneur, you need to have a big plant. You need to have this much investment. Then only you can do it. You are killing people. But when uh, you were talking about this mushroom growing house, so I was just wondering when in Shobit University's campuses I will have one. So at earliest, I would like to have one in my campus, in both the university campuses, so that these houses can not only encourage people, but they can say, uh, they can believe that with small initiatives, we can do wonders again. I loved when you said money is expensive in India. The same way courage is the same way curiosity is, the same way entrepreneurship is. Because unfortunately, they all are interlinked when we look at the ecosystems. And where the government, the system, everybody, we all are talking about developing young entrepreneurs. We are not realizing that what they need. They do not need only encouragements. They need a financial support system also. And to give that support system, money has to be expensive, but available, readily available, and with a flexible model that for what purpose that money is taken. If it is for weapons, it must be the most expensive money in the world. But if it is for removing the worries of the people around, if it is for livelihood, then it should be the most cheapest money of the world. This is what is required, and definitely I'm going to ask our uh, School of Business Studies and our uh, uh, professors of economics to look at how they can develop a case study, what they can do, that how they can make a study which we can uh, share with as a white paper to the policymakers also. That please make money flexible, dynamic model should be there where it is expensive and where it is cheap. That was wonderful. I loved that uh, you are developing a complete ecosystem around mushroom. When you were showing mushroom toffees, they were looking tasty to me. When you were showing many other things, I was really feeling, yeah, wow. I do not uh, eat mushroom much. I am allergic to mushroom, but I am sure that many of your products I will love to try. And I think this is what an entrepreneur has to do, that people, those who are not willing to have it, must be tempted to have it. And these models we have to make not only limited to the areas, like the Northeast you are doing. Every year I spend few days in Northeast. I love to go to Northeast. Like when nobody was traveling to Assam, I was traveling to Guwahati and nearby cities uh, just creating awareness that how important it is to have education. When there were no private universities, I used to go to Cotton College. I used to conduct uh, conferences, webinars, talks 
uh, even street nukkadu talks i used to give myself around 15 20 years back where i was uh, talking to the young boys and girls of northeast look education is very important and today wonderful change has come in northeast also now wonderful institutions are there everybody understand ecosystem has changed political uh, scenario has changed many new things have come up now what professor muni was telling the digital enab enablement of every idea has to be there because today we are living in a global city the world has become a small city a global city because what good you are doing it should be known to many others in my northern in india in western up i see many farmers i know many people those who are growing mushroom but are they having those good practices what you have learned from your failures do they know that they can do experimentation with mushroom do they know that they can have a mushroom growing house or even a hut no they do not so it means we have to come on many digital platforms we have to see that ideas also need to be uh, having a franchise i always say every good idea should be such a model that franchising of the idea can be there when the world is talking about ipr i talk about non ipr models in this country in this world where every good idea should be spread out everywhere everybody can do it there is no competition business is for everybody clients will be there customer will be there no monopoly is required just we have to see that every good idea goes to everybody every potential entrepreneur young boys and girls and they can start doing wonders so for that one digital intervention is required do as you are giving training to your people around there where you are uh, making them aware of the things how they have to do it what they have to do i personally believe that if it can also be formalized then many other people can learn new things what i mean by that micro certifications in our expertise are the need of the thousands and thousands of agriculture were uh, degree colleges are there higher education institutions are there those who are teaching agriculture but they are teaching agriculture if we can have some small models say all business schools they talk about entrepreneurship but they are, do not talk that in agriculture where the entrepreneurship lies where are the possibilities lies so mr barua if we can develop a micro certificate based on your learnings maybe a few hours it's not necessary that it has to be of many hours maybe a few hours which can be digital which can be recorded once even it can be online like coursera edx many of the people around are having such programs and it can be propagated on a platform like shobit university so i am sure that your mission to create social entrepreneurs to change the scenario to give a social impact of your failures and successes to bring a change in the country globally will be possible soon i invite you to the university to do whatever you wish to do because at shobit university i always say shobit university does not have a red tape we have a red carpet for all wildest ideas and your idea is not now the wildest first time when you failed maybe people must have told you what you are talking it is very wild it is very crazy i remember 23 years back when we decided to establish an engineering college in our village people said okay this village deserves one iti and you are talking about an institution like iit are you confused maybe a polytechnic will do you are talking about an engineering college and today there we have one of our university thousands and thousands of students are studying there and our alumni are making the nation proud globally in all big small multinationals of the world change has come 
So the same way I invite you, whatever you wish to do, please explore with Professor Moni, what we can do together. Let us do it. Let us come beyond uh, North East, not only for selling laddus to Delhi, but also to empowering the youth with new ideas so that they can also create better laddus, more laddus, more colorful products can be there for the nation. Thank you very much. It was indeed a pleasure listening to you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Thank Honorable so Chancellor. I would like to request to Mr. Pranjal Barua to interact with the Honorable Chancellor, Mr. Pranjal. So I would like to uh, just finish the last slide. Okay. Hmm. The last slide. That was the, the last slide was there. So if I can finish the last slide, uh, please, please, please. Get, take your permission. So the last slide was, sir, this. So the last slide, what Northeast can offer, not Northeast can offer a superfood. So this is what I wanted to leave today for as the superfood for thought. It's not only food for thought, but it's a superfood for thought. And tapioca is one product that has not been even touched. Northeast has huge, huge tapioca, which is wild and, you know, it's not used. We have banana. We have one of the largest banana production is in Southeast Asia. There is not a single banana processing unit in this area. And we, we have some of the most unique rice varieties. And our sticky rice, I could see in Barcelona, in Alimentaria, that it contains one of the best percentage of the uh, stickiness, the glue. So if we can mix mushroom with all these things, we can really have the next vegan meat. We can have the next super baby food such kind of industries coming up. So this is what I would like to leave today, the thought which we want to really promote. And that's why in our ashram, we are setting up the first kitchen and a processing unit where we'll be, you know, making all these things come together. So that was my last slide. Thank you. So yeah, now the interaction, sir. So sir, I'm um, so much thankful and uh, uh, for, yes, Definitely, you have the knowledge, the uh, the digitalization, which is not yet we have achieved. And yes, we want to take it to a larger audience. And we want our experience to be shared with as much people as possible. So they don't have to go through all those failures that we have gone through. And, and we would like it to go forward from here. So there's two things which is in my mind. One is a proper documentation and digitalization. Yes, that can be done. So your university and Mushroom Development Foundation can come together. And we can mutually together can benefit a larger segment of our population, especially the women. We can really empower the women producing mushrooms and, you know, setting up this as a micro industry. And I look forward and I am uh, very open and very positive. And I want to see your mushroom growing unit. In fact, if possible to start from tomorrow. <laughs> I, will, I, I, I can send I will someone. To, I can send I someone immediately. Yes, 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 yes. I will love to see that happening. Yes, yes. Also, yes, Moni, yes. please explore with him. Okay, <laughs> very nice yeah. that. So, thank you very much, and I also thank Professor M. B. Ashok, who have uh, you know introduced Mr. Branjal Barua to me, and he made it possible to have Mr. Branjal Barua to be with us today.
it is a very important you know webinar today very you know is a value chain based and a lot of ideas and he has also given a lot of you know the challenges and opportunities which we have it and it is a complete you know menu which has given it why what and how that's why the second slide which he talked about is that what is it and how is it and why he is doing it and uh, he also said it that you know that you know that uh, you know he is an uh, admirer of dr korean and he wants to make an amul out of mushroom and you know he wants to make it and we you know soviet institute of engineering technology deep deep university and mushroom development foundation we'll work together and we'll see to that you know we achieve in india and we'll make it as a superfood you said it last slide is very important i am we are working from the university side we are working with an another ngo from northeast we'll also introduce you you to that ngo who has also signed an mou and the this banana you know is is very important banana value chain is very important and um, assam has got the you know largest asia's you know largest banana market and uh, which is very important and tapioca is in another area we don't have a complete value chain and uh, you know this is with mushroom tapioca and then sticky rice once upon a time 2014 15 from the university we have been talking to you know that uh, you know uh, madurai mills there are 450 floor mills need sticky rice about 400 and about uh, 400 uh, you know tons of sticky rice every day to make the you know the product, produce, products out of that you know like uh, vermicelli and so on so forth for southeast asian market the sticky rice is 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 necessary from assam to northeast you know to uh, you know south of india so we have been working we have been talking to various people as to how to have the sticky rice is a very important one which can make lot of employment opportunity and also lot of wealth for the uh, the farmers who produces sticky rice and uh, and and in our last slide it is very nice that we just post it that even though that you know that's after the uh, honorable chancellor's talk and you also put it that you concluded your talk it is very important we are very happy we'll work together and uh, as as you very rightly said it you know that uh, mushroom digitalized mushroom value chain that is we call it from the university mushroom informatics network value chain is very important we'll bring all the stakeholders together in the value chain and uh, with your support let us do that and uh, as you very rightly said it so with institute of engineering and technology and uh, mushroom development foundation let us come together and for establishing micro industry in a concept in cluster level through appropriate capacity building and so on and so forth thank you very much and i thank honorable chancellor and also is our guest speaker mr brandal barua you know for for making this today's program so successful i am very happy and today is the 70th edition of the webinar series 70 and you make it you know my you know uh, mission uh, you know is so happy and uh, and uh, let us make it that it is an another you know uh, jump from 70 to 100 another 30 you know you put the seed that how a social entrepreneur you know we have to look from that sense that innovation social impact and entrepreneurship and how to make women a leader that is very important with ethical fiber with this one and with the permission of the honorable chancellor we would like to close the webinar today and leave studio thank you very much for all the participants and the faculty members and mr branjal barua and our honorable chancellor for this today's program and we leave studio and uh, you know have a nice day thank you very much thank you. i i want to thank dr ashok for this wonderful um, uh, opportunity of being with you Dr. Asok was instrumental. Thank you, Dr. Asok. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you.